Yay, we're live. Okay, hello. Hey, everyone. So, great to see you all today. I'm here with the wonderful Joe. Fal Do you prefer Joe or Joanna? Uh, either way is fine. For some reason, I prefer Joanna written, but Joe spoken is perfect. Let's go with Joe today, then. I'm used to calling you Joe. So, we're here with the wonderful Joe Fallon from the Cotswold Chalkboard, one of our lovely marketplace shop owners. Um, and today, we are here for a live tutorial. But before we get into that, does everyone want to say hi in the comments and let us know where you're watching us from? I can see a few, a um, couple of people from Austria, actually, which is yeah. cool. very cool. I was out there recently. Uh, Laurie says, I actually made it on time. Impressive, Laurie. I'm impressed too, for myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Canada for Claudia. Hey, Claudia, oh, what's up? Wow. from Dubai. What an international bunch you are. They've got yeah. Nick from Maine in the USA, Denmark, Mia, um, Canada, Croatia. Wow. Indiana. I like it. We've got people from all over. <laughs> Dave from South Africa as well. I think we've covered most of the globe. We have, yeah. New, new group. So uh, yeah, this is gonna be fun. We've got time zones all over the place. We've probably got some very sleepy, sleepy people who are tuning in yeah, right now. Appreciate it, thank you. <laughs> it's the middle of the day for us here. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, you can tell. Um, Joe, where are you from? Actually, it might um, be. Um, a, I'm a good from way. Cloud, <laughs> England. So that's kind of towards the southwest, kind of Gloucestershire way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is a beautiful part of the country. And what yeah. are you going to be teaching us today? Uh, today, I will be showing you how to make a summer, a nice summer travel poster using some elements from the two dollars summer bundle. Perfect. And I've seen it. It's a very cool poster. So yeah. I had a, had a lingo in there. It's always like the key for summer. <laughs> um, so let us know in the comments, have you grabbed the $2 bundle yet? If not, there is a green button below this video. I mean, it literally is. I don't know what a coffee is these days, Joe, especially in the States, about $8 probably. Oh. So, um, you can't get anything for $2. So to get all yeah, of these amazing yeah. products uh, for next to nothing, is pretty crazy. Um, really yeah. I can see a bunch of people have grabbed it. So if you do have it, feel free if you've got this split screen thing going on, like most of the team do here, um, you know, get your split screen open and you could watch us and do the tutorial and follow along at the same time, maybe. Could be fun. Yeah. Right. Perfect. All right, Joe, do you want to, yeah, uh, do you want to take it away? Okie dokie. So. Thank you for the kind words, by the way. Wilson, I can see you got it. Paul got uh, it. No, Claudia got it two seconds after it went live. First. I'll help. <laughs> uh, Jay got it. It's an awesome bundle. Angela, thank you guys. Ah, there we go. There we go. So this is um, the design that we're going to be creating. Nice. Um, we're using Photoshop. I'm using, I just want to quickly point out, I'm using Photoshop, um, the 2019 version, which has got a few differences with the free transform tool, um, which I'll sort of talk through as I'm doing the tutorial, because it took me a little while to get used to as well. Mm-hmm. And um, we're going to start by opening up our image from uh, that we downloaded from Unsplash. So I'm just going to click and drag that. I love this little guy. He's awesome. He's so, he's so cool, isn't he? You know, he's, just, <laughs> he's on holiday. He's happy. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce the image size slightly to 50% just for the sake of this demo so that my computer doesn't explode halfway through or the whirring sound don't get, don't get too much. Always fun for live streaming. As always, I think my hard drive, uh, hard drive space went out last time I was doing this. So I'm kind of trying to. No, that. I remember that. Okay. <laughs> Touch wood. Touch wood. It will be okay. So once you've got your background open, the first thing we're going to do is use one of our um, summer pastel backgrounds. So if you go to file, going to place embedded. And By the way, while that's loading, um, you guys might recognize Joe's voice because she actually has done a ton of tutorials for us over the years. And in particular, she's done some really amazing recent tutorials. So when you uh, do the tutorials that accompany our main bundles, many of them have been from Joe, and she's just a really excellent teacher. Oh, thank you very much. And that English, that English accent always goes down. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a the accent out and about. I think it doesn't get enough recognition. <laughs> so we're going to what we're going to do is we're going to transform that. So if we hold down shift whilst turning it around, that locks it to sort of specific degrees. So 45, 75, 90. And I'm going to hold down alt. And for earlier versions of Photoshop, you'll need to hold down the shift key to transform it to scale. But for some reason, this new version, it scales 
it keeps the proportions by default. And that um, that really threw me the first time. Yeah, me too, actually. And we're going to hit return to apply that, that transformation. It's a cool texture. What is it's that? Really is it kind of underwater? Like... I don't know. I mean, it's it's from is it the um, the mixed pix box, the spring pastel backdrops, but it just looks happy and explosive and lots of sprinkly things. So I love mixed pix actually. She, yeah, she's very popular with our community. Fantastic. And what we're going to do then is change the blend mode to overlay, and we're going to drop the opacity slightly to eighty five percent. And you can see there. It's going to move it slightly down so the sparkles kind of come more from behind the flamingo so it looks like it's just kind of splashed into the water and it's looking very happy <laughs> you can't be a happy flamingo you can't be a happy it's the site is what it just says summer doesn't it <laughs> right and what we're going to start doing now is drawing some shapes in the two lower corners to start framing the image a bit and giving us um some areas to add some type so we're going to create a new layer and using the polygonal marquee tool, doesn't matter too much what color it is at the moment because we're going to change that. Kind of awesome. Not a word you hear very often either, polygonal. It took, it took me, I had to say it to myself several times to make sure I was pronouncing it properly. It's just one of those words that you, after you say a certain amount of times, like, is that even a word? I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. I would have accepted polygon, to be honest. You uh, you went brave with polygon. <laughs> the polygon, the, oh, I can't say it now. I'll just, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just carry on. And we're going to draw a little triangle there. And what we'll do is we're going to change this to a sort of nice blue colour. So if we click on the foreground color there we're going to change that to zero two five five nine one and hit okay and then if you hit alt delete on your keyboard that will fill that shape with the color we've just selected and if you click on the marquee tool then just click anywhere off the canvas that'll deselect that lovely we actually recorded the honest designers podcast last night and um, it doesn't sound very interesting, but we were talking about efficiency. Yeah. And Lisa made the point, when you actually get your shortcuts down, it yeah. effectively, the time you save over the years is unfathomable. Like I've seen people who are very good with shortcuts and you're definitely better than I am. Um, okay. And they work twice as quickly as I do when they do their work. I know, it's, it's so, I kind of, it's one of those things I keep telling myself, I'm going to learn all the shortcuts to like using my computer, using all the software, and it just never really happens. But I think it's just a case of things that you find yourself going to like the menu and toolbar a lot for, it usually tells you what the shortcuts are. So it's just a case of gradually memorizing them, I think. It is impressive, isn't it? I've seen some really high-end designers and they're barely using their cursor. It's like they're constantly typing. Oh, I know, I know. It's like when you start learning about them for like kind of the Mac and Windows as well, you can just use, I use um, a launch bar like to open applications and things and it's just, it makes such a difference. Anyway, I digress. We've created a new layer here and eventually doing the same thing, just drawing another shape over the top. And what I'm doing is making this triangle a little bit smaller so that, I don't know if you can see, it kind of tapers down to a point at the bottom. And it doesn't matter what color this one is, because we're going to apply effect an effect over the top of it. So if you just hit Alt delete again to fill, and then just click somewhere else. Now we're going to add another file. So we go to File, Place Embedded. And this is the deep blush texture from the um, Pink Coffee Blush Collective uh, typeface set. So it comes with these lovely textures as well. Which you can obviously use for various things. Oh, that's nice. It is lovely. And I'm just hitting Alt on the keyboard and dragging that out. And then we're just going to move it to cover the area that we want. And then if you hit Return to apply the changes. Next, we're going to create a clipping mask, which is something I do quite a lot. And again, this is one with a good shortcut. You can either kind of go to the main menu and select Create Clipping Mask. But what I tend to do is hit Alt on the keyboard and then if you hover between the two layers, you'll see that little cursor change and that will automatically apply it to the layer directly below it. And then... Oh, pretty sweet. 
it's it's so quick and it's so easy. I just find myself using it all the time. And oh, yeah, I live in clipping masks when I do this camera. <laughs> it's just uh, and um, yeah, then we're going to group these layers together. So click on the top layer, hold down shift and the bottom one to select everything in between. Command G to group. And I'm going to type shapes. I do like that that mix picks uh, kind of glowy texture. I might have to start using that on my selfies for Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> <Got that. laughs> Shimmery vibe going on. I know. It's just, for, just choose like a different one for each week or each season or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, what we're going to start doing now is draw a shape for the other side as well. Oh, actually, sorry, before we do that, we're going to add some decorative elements. So what we're going to do is, if I'm adding more than one thing, what I tend to do is go straight from my finder and then just drag them all in. So mm -hmm. what we're going to do here is we can go for the floral 10. And I've um, obviously grouped all these together just for speed and efficiency here. So the layout will be a little bit different for most people. And 11, and I'm holding on command on the keyboard as I select, select these. There we go. And then I have to just drag them into Photoshop, hit return to apply it. Awesome. By the way, I can see um, tons of people are starting to join now. Um, let us know in the comments where you're from. Uh, and also, don't worry, you haven't missed too much. We're just starting to lay out the early phases of this layout, but it is coming together. And you can catch the replay, of course, afterwards if you miss the start. Absolutely. And um, I've just turned off the visibility for the ones I'm not using immediately. And so I'm just going to scale this down slightly. So I think I said earlier, this is the main difference between this version of Photoshop and earlier ones is that everything now uh, scales for proportion by default. So you don't have to hold down shift while you're doing it. And I'm mm -hmm. going to move that towards the bottom corner. And what we're doing is we're just covering most of this blush shape here with this, just so it doesn't get too, too pink. <laughs> and then hit return to apply that. Make sure you've got the layer that you're working on selected as well. Scale that down. And we're going to move that just about here. Like I said, there's, there'll be a lot of adjusting probably as we go along as well with the position of shapes and items, so nothing's set in stone. And Pam says that new way of scaling in Photoshop still really throws me off. After years of holding the shift key, uh, I keep on doing it. I can't I the old habit. It drives me a bit nuts. I, yeah, exactly the same. <laughs> well, I have to come up. Oh, let's just move this to the top as well because that's going on above our other two layers. I, I only um, installed 2019 about two hours before this call. And when, oh, I, was no. trying to, when I was like kind of running through it or thinking think I just better go through it to make sure it all works okay. And suddenly it wasn't working. It's like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> like, <laughs> I say, that's a risky play <laughs> upgrading just before. <laughs> I know, so. There we go. So that's now we've got all our little decorative areas there. And uh, we'll group those together as well. And I'm going to type uh, plants L for left hand side. And as we're going to be sort of st stacking a lot of the elements sort of above and below different areas, it makes it really grouping things together and just makes it so much easier to organize all your layers as we go along with the design. So it's a really, a really good habit to get into. Yep. Um, and yeah. Yeah, look at this organization. Definitely uh, not every designer works like that. <laughs> I know. This is, more, this is very much for the demo purposes. You should see some like my own files. <laughs> just like, I spent like an hour just trying to find the right layer. So we're going to create another layer now at the very top of this stack. And um, again, we're going to go to the polygonal, the C tool. And <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. We're going to use that word as many times as possible for, <laughs> for the rest of it. And we're going to draw a triangle in this bottom right corner. Yeah. And this time we're going to change the color to zero A D F A five. This nice kind of sort of turquoise teal green. And press Alt Delete. Cool. Uh, Lucia says in the comments uh, that she's struggling to see the whole canvas because our video is overtaking it. It should be Lucia that we're very small in the corner. 
and Ooh. uh and the main screen is quite large that's what i'm seeing let me know if anyone else is having that issue and if you are having that issue perhaps um jump off and then jump back on again that's my Sounds that's the level of my technical expertise turn it off <laughs> and turn it on again <laughs> sorry i just had a, mate, a bit of a zoom issue there going on in photoshop don't worry we're, we're seeing those sweet pink pixels yeah that's <laughs> Full, full appreciation for the flamingo there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't appreciate him enough, to be honest. He's quite a character. No, no. So, okay, we've got our triangle, and we just need to bring that layer below the plants, but above the background shape. So this is, I you can see, having everything group just makes it so much easier. Mm -hmm. and we're going to create another layer above that. Go back to the blue colour that we used earlier and draw... Oh, the polygonal suit tool again. <laughs> and then draw another little triangle above that where it sort of tapers a little bit towards the top there just to add a little bit of interest and I think different angles do add a little bit of dynamism to the design. So it's always quite a nice trick. Nice. And uh, any, anyone who is having um, issues, I think there's just a couple of you, try resizing the browser window and that, and that kind of thing and it should focus on the main video, but it seems to be fine for the majority. Okay. And um, so now we've got our kind of little frame going here. So it kind of brings more attention to our lovely little flamingo. Nice. I like it. Yeah, it's leading the eye. Yeah. Well, wow, um, Pam said she recently did a very large image for a gallery. It was 800 inches wide. Oh. <laughs> Lots of layers and she had to be really careful about naming them. Damn, that's impressive. It is. It's, it's only when, usually when you do something, a big project, that you forget to kind of group and layer, name layers properly, and then you spend an eternity trying to find everything again. It's, um, it's a lesson mm -hmm. learned. So. I, I remember when I used to do a lot of this kind of work, often the file would get so big I couldn't save it as a PSD and it had to be a PSB. Yeah. You, you know what I'm talking about, where it forces you to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> format. yeah. There we go. So I've just um, grouped those two together and named it Shapes R or whatever is logical for you. Yeah, and when you name layers, just go for the most obvious obvious name you can find. <laughs> it's kind of... Um, okay, next step, we're going to add some text to the design. So we're going to now we've sort of um, filled in these lower corners. We want to balance that out a bit by adding some text to the top here. So go to our text tool and Lovely. we're going to use our blush typeface that comes with the bundle so I, many i was about to uh slip things. into sales mode there and joe uh is that typeface one of the many incredible fonts part of the <laughs> bundle? Well, you say? Well, funny you should say that Tom. it is one of the quality fonts included with this bargain bundle available now from design cuts <laughs> my goodness and quality you say how how Indeed. quality very high quality i'd imagine <laughs> top, top quality can't get better elsewhere <laughs> and um yeah, thank, thank you, everyone. We can see a bunch of you have grabbed this bundle, but the comments have been ridiculously lovely. Everyone's just been really, really enjoying playing around with all the elements. So thank you for all the support. We love doing this a couple of times every year for you. It's our thank you for the community, for you being so wonderful. <laughs> Fantastic. And um, yes, whilst that was going on, I've just typed in the top right corner there, or I've opened up the text tool, and we're going to type in design. And what we want to do is make this pink like the flamingo. So if you highlight the text, go to the eyedropper tool, which is another, um, another tool that I do use quite a lot in Photoshop, is to select um, a nice bright pink from the design. And using colors that already exist within your design just means that everything will work together and look good. So mm -hmm. good tip. Yeah. And it also saves you just trying to figure out what color is going to work best as well. <laughs> and it's, it's going to transform that slightly and put it on an angle yeah pam says the eyedropper tool is a real friend it definitely it is. is okay and same again and you can type your perfect and here we're going to use um one of the nice things about this typeface is that it does um, come with lots of different stylistic effects and ligatures. So if we highlight that, I'm just going to change the C to this alternative version here. So it does look a little bit more different to the E because where this one hooks down, it looks a bit too similar to the E, I think. So yeah. mm -hmm. if we do that, it just adds a little bit of variance, which is nice. 
Nice. Got to love a good ligature. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what the we're gonna do, out there, it makes us happy. <laughs> and what I'm going to do again is select them, um, one of the cut darker colors from the design. So I've got use of flamingo's beak, but for things like text and stuff that covers a smaller area, it's usually worth just making it a little bit darker. So I'm going to use that as a reference and then select a darker color, highlight the text and use that from my swatches. And we're going to make this a little bit smaller as well. Is the fourth word going to be flamingo? No, we, we, shall we, have, we, we can take maybe to take some requests. <laughs> <Design> <laughs> what, what was it in the uh, main outcome? I'm it, it, was, it was design your perfect getaway. Oh, we might have to stick with that. That's pretty good. Okay. And all, all is revealed now. <laughs> it's oh. a nice font, actually. It's lovely. It's really nice. It just yeah. feels very smooth and relaxed. Yeah, I, I like a brush front. I think they can be quite overdone, um, at least in terms of the average quality ones. But there's something about when they're really like one of the better ones, just the texture of it is gorgeous. I know. It's kind of how I wish my handwriting was in real life. <laughs> it's, um... Yeah, me too. Yeah. And I can confirm it definitely is nothing like that. No, my, my, my handwriting is terrible, which is it's very, it's, it's, a, it's a poor show when you're, um, do like lettering and sign writing for a living when people actually see you scrubbing down notes and it just looks <laughs> really awkward. I, I, I promise that the final thing will look better than this. <laughs> yeah, there was a thing on, I think it was Instagram, where top letterers had to expose yeah. their real handwriting. And similar to you, they were very, very talented at lettering, but their handwriting just looked awful by comparison. It's, it's very <laughs> common. Things if you do it like because your livelihood just for your own stuff is kind of give up because you're having to put so much care and attention to it otherwise. So it's kind of like any scroll will do. Um, yeah. Okay, so we've got our um, sort of type in the place there. And um, Sue was just asking what the font name is. So Sue, it's part of the two dollar bundle, which is the uh, green button below this video. You can find it. And the font here is called. This is uh, the Blush Collective Upright. Perfect. And this is in the, the regular weight. It does come in condensed as well. So I tweak this slightly. Okay. And um, so what we're going to do now is to help this type up here stand out a little bit more is to place uh, another shape in the background. So first thing I'm going to do, though, is group these together. So I'm going to put text top. Create a file. Place embedded. I'm going to go for this nice tropical leaf here. And what I'm going to do is first we need to move this to below our text. And we're going to make this quite a bit bigger so that it covers both the words there. And Move it over here. I should might just make that a little bit bigger. There we go. And that's made the text even harder to read. So what we're going to do is <laughs> change the blend mode to screen and drop the opacity to about 75%. And it just gives a slightly lighter background for it to stand out on. It almost looks like a lens flare or something now. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of one that exists there. And um, I some, sometimes you find like your design's got like a bit of space that just needs filling, but it doesn't need to be too, mm -hmm. too in your face, like having like a light sort of almost like a watermark, kind of these kind of light, lighter screens going yeah. on in the background does help. I have to admit, as you first put the leaf there, I was like, where's she going with this? <laughs> and I was like, ah, da da. <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's, all, it's all been thought through. <laughs> it's saved by the screen mode. Yeah. And um, let me just check my notes. I know what I'm going to be doing next. Okay. This is looking really cool. So this is something we started doing on these Hangouts. Um, but can everyone who's watching live, and there is a bunch of you right now, leave a comment in the form of an emoji that sums up what you're thinking so far about this tutorial and this live demonstration? 
Is there a flamingo a... emoji? Because that, that would be oh, amazing. Oh, that would be perfect. Like a whole flock. Is it a flamboyance of flamingos? The official. Yeah, it is a flamboyance. Good knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so we're getting a heart from Sue. Yeah, guys, get involved. Everyone watching live, it's always fun to see your emojis. Another heart from Lisa. Cat eyes with heart emojis, always a strong favourite. <laughs> I love always the like cat. the one with glasses, just people like really paying studious <laughs> attention. Getting lots of thumbs up. We've got a uh, got a frog from Shristi. So <laughs> <laughs> hopefully that's not referring to one of us. Um, <laughs> we've got uh, a, the dancing woman as well from Angela. Claudia with the clap, with the applause. Excellent, excellent. I I always like seeing uh, the community's creativity with their emojis. Where are the flamingos? Where are the flamingos? There's got to be a flamingo. People might need to do some searching here. There's a crab. That's, uh, yeah, not, not quite a flamingo, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not well, these emojis. While well, that's going on, I've um, chosen the, the, this is the frame number four from the, um, I think, from the Julia Dreams collection of the tropical assets. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to move around. So it's going to be kind of quite a lot of tweaking just to get this in the right place. It's nice that I can see what you're doing with uh, regards to framing it. Yes, yes. So, what? Because it's got so many like lovely lines in this. Mm. Uh, we just wanted to use some of those, and I need to actually make that a little bit bigger. We're getting lots of lots of uh, waves and beaches in, in the emojis now. Flamingos! <laughs> Come on, guys! <laughs> if anyone finds a flamingo. In, in fact, I don't know if it exists, so this could be a futile oh, challenge. Oh. Um, if there is a flamingo emoji, the first person to use it gets a $15 gift voucher. <laughs> I want to see a flamingo. So we need, we need to get on the case. There's so many, it's, it's a sad time now that every time I kind of, I try and find an emoji and it doesn't exist, I'm quite sad because I just don't know how I'm going to express myself otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I think there might not be one. I, I don't, yeah, everyone's, <laughs> no, there isn't, damn, okay, it's oh, no. a bad challenge, and, and okay. anyway, we want people learning loads from the tutorial, not on a different tab on Google, searching no. for flamingo <laughs> emojis. <laughs> Afterwards, we'll just, um, we'll just kind of have a petition to email Apple and uh, get the, get the emoji sorted. <laughs> exactly. There we go, so. reposition that what we're going to do is apply this same blush texture to the frame here so mm -hmm. what we're going to do is go back to our shapes folder and if we hold down Control and j that'll create a direct copy and we're going to just move that to above our frame and what we'll need to do is scale that so it also covers Design and we're going to create a flipping mask. And whilst I'm here, what I'm going to do is just move that so that it sits below the, both the shapes in the corner. And what we're going to now do is create a layer mask. So this area here where it's going behind the text, it kind of becomes a little bit distracting. So what we want to do is remove all the areas that sit within this leaf design. And to do that, we're going to go back to our leaf layer, which is floral 20. Select the magic wand tool and have the tolerance set to something quite low. I've got 15 and make sure the contiguous box is deselected. And then all you need to do is click somewhere on the leaf. You'll see that's all been highlighted. What what does contiguous mean? It means... It means I kind of select everything up to a specific edge. So say if you had a graphic where it was um, like kind of black and white spots, or something. Yep. If you clicked on, if you had contiguous selected and clicked on, say, a white area, it would only select that area where, and where there was until it got to like a defined border, whereas discontiguous means it would select all the whites in the whole canvas. So it's a little bit hard to explain unless you can actually see it, but... 
con contiguous kind of keeps everything contained. So it'll select everything of that type up to yep. a very clear defined border. Discontiguous will collect, select everything of that type on the whole document or canvas. Good knowledge. <laughs> I'm so glad I actually knew that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt bad putting you on the spot. <laughs> oh no, I was like, I'm not a real designer, I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like that might never come up in a pub quiz, but we shall see. No, we, we do. I, I have a friend who owns a pub and she does pub quizzes and she keeps threatening me to do a pub uh, quiz called the font of all knowledge <laughs> or, or design and type typography based. <laughs> anyway. I think they should do that at a conference. That would be fun. <laughs> they should. The, the design is pub quiz. Anyway, um, sorry, what I've done is also in the meantime, hit um, shift command I and what that's done is selected everything outside of the, um, the leaf. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go back to my frame layer. And if I click on the layer mask tool there, what that's done is if I just show you created a mask. And to see that, I've hit Alt on the keyboard whilst clicking the, um, the mask thumbnail there. And we can just click back on to get back to our design. And if I zoom Very in, nice. you can see that's now disappeared behind the leaf skills masks used to scare me but they're they're not that bad they can be your best friend no no well it's more it's more because i forgot what was what and then i realized obviously if it's dark you can't see it and if it's light you can so that yeah. was kind of how i <laughs> try to remember things <laughs> it's, like, it's like your left and your right when you hold your hands up i know <laughs> you need something okay and um what we're going to do now is create another frame above that so we're going to go to our uh, layer, make sure that's selected, file, place embedded, and we're going to select our other frame, which is frame five. Place that into our document. Again, scale that up. And with this one, we're going to be masking out the top part. So we just want to focus on how the lines look kind of in this bottom area here. Mm -hmm. and I do like a polygonal frame. Poly a polygonal frame. Uh, well, polygonal shapes are very, uh, very popular at the moment. So yeah. <laughs> we need to incorporate them more into our designs. <laughs> so. I've got a very similar thing at home that's like a candle holder. It's, uh, oh yeah, yeah. you do kind of see them everywhere. I've got like um, a, a, like a little terrarium type thing that's kind of like sort of mm -hmm. shaped as well. It's all very on on trend. I'm told. <laughs> It is, but obviously we had it before it was cool, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Very much set the trend. Absolutely. <laughs> I think I, I think this this design is very on trend. So flamingos and these um these sort of tropical leaves are already popular as well at the moment. So <laughs> yeah, just throw uh, like a uh, what is it a pineapple in there? A pineapple. They're everywhere at the minute in design. And, and unicorns. I was kind of having this conversation with a friend about when did unicorns suddenly become so popular again? I mean, did did they ever stop being popular? Did they? What what happened? It's kind of. Yeah, it, that has been a trend actually. People are having unicorn cakes. Unicorn ice creams. Just, um, yeah, ev everything is a unicorn. Unicorn gin, as well. Oh really? That sounds right up my street. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that will work fine. So we'll place that. And we'll go to our layer mask icon there. And uh, we'll go back to our polygonal lasso tool to draw a mask around our polygonal frame. OK, um, every time Joe says polygonal, someone has to do a shot that's watching. <laughs> the drinking game. Oh, God, you'll be dead by the end of the tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the with Nail and I drinking game. You're meant to drink what they drink, and you, you will. I don't think anyone survived. <laughs> Great film. I think the most quotable film, I'm told. Yes, it really is. <laughs> anyway, um, so we're going to go and change the uh, sort of hue of that. So if we go to our hue saturation icon from our adjustment icon down here, we'll click colorize, select the little mask icon at the bottom there, and we're going to type 206 for our hue. We're going to bring our saturation right up to 100 to make it really bright and leave our lightness as it is. And that gives us pretty much a similar tone to our bottom border there. 
Very nice. And then we're just going to group our frames here into its own layer so we know where to find it. And so that'll be action G to do that. Or yes. Control G. Control G. And um, now we're going to work on filling in this space and sort of towards the right hand side here to balance out the floor elements here. And we're going to, I'm going to go directly to the finder because we're going to select several items at once. So I'm going to select floral two. It's quite funny, isn't it, working this way around? Because normally you would get a brief from a client or someone and then you would go and find your elements to use, whereas this is yeah. almost the opposite. It's like, here's a bunch of elements. Let's make up a fun layout using them. I know, but it's quite, as, as I say, when you're kind of told to design anything that you want, it becomes impossible. When you've actually got some kind of constraints in place, it does make it a lot easier. So mm -hmm. it's always um, it's always fun to see what you're working with. And I think it sort of helps work the creative muscles as well when you have got those limitations and just seeing how how you can sort of um, look at things and figure out how they might work and how you can maybe use them in ways that wouldn't normally be used. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. But what we're going to do here is we're going to use our leaf again and we're going to duplicate that. So you can also have the layer selected. Hit Alt. Sorry, make sure you've got the Move tool selected as well. Hit Alt on the keyboard. And when you see that double cursor appear, it means it's going to duplicate the layer. So we're going to do a copy of that and bring it over to the right. And we're just going to reduce the size of this. At the end of this, are you going to say, and here's one I made earlier? <laughs> I, no, because it probably look a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> but and what we're going to do is just change the bend mode back to what it was originally. And that kind of doesn't look quite right against that color. So what we're going to do is help blend that in a little bit more. And we're going to use um, another of the backgrounds. So I go to Place Embedded. Fine background 31, which is this lovely kind of spring green kind of color. Like that. And we're going to clip that to the leaf shape. And then you sort of move and position it to a point that you quite like. And we're going to change the blend mode to overlay just to make it a little bit brighter. Oh, that's cool. Yes, it's, so it's kind. It's nice. It just helps to um, just make it a little bit more subtle. But it kind of, but because it's the same effect as what we've got going on in the background here, it um, it just sort of blends it in nicely. And if you're anything like me, you got to this point Next. just by playing, like trial and error. So it's like different blend modes, you know, different opacities until you're happy with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Lois says, "Oh, I like that." It's nice. I think um, like the overlay tool is, is a really good one for kind of bright summary designs just because it just enhances all the colors. And we're going to move that to above our leaf there. Overlay is the best blend mode, I think. <laughs> I, I use it all the time. It's um, another poll that you'll have to do. What, what is the best blend mode in Photoshop? Let <laughs> <laughs> uh, me. I'm actually going to set up a poll. <laughs> what's your favorite blend mode? Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite? I won't be able to remember them all now. I, I don't want to put all of them because there's loads. Uh, so what have we? What are the main ones? We've got uh, multiply. We've got overlay. Screen. I think is always a useful one. Screen. Yeah. Let's just do the big ones. Uh, hard light. Soft light. Color burn as well, I think, is a good one to go back to every now and again. Color burn. Imagine Ooh. if like, someone's eaved off in this conversation. It would just sound like people shouting out random phrases and work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just nonsensical. Um, cool. I might, I might put those up. I don't want to put all of them because it would just be chaos. But... Everyone uh, who's watching live right now, just as Joe's working here and we're all learning from her, if you click on polls at the bottom, you can actually see as people vote, it starts like changing. 
And we got multiplying the lead. <laughs> it, it, it. It's, it's an old favourite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, multiply is killing it. No. Oh. 80% of the vote. Yeah, and usually I don't actually use it in this design at all. It's usually, I usually use it all the time. Um, mm. Anyway, what I've just done there is just move those layers, I've grouped those shapes together and just move them so that they sit above the frame but below the sort of main shape in the foreground here. Mm -hmm. And That's now we're going to add a little bit more text to this bottom corner. So what we want is we want the text layer to be at the top. So I select type and I'm going to make sure that the text justification here is set to align right. Let's move over a little bit. And then I'm going to type in DC Travel, which is your new venture. <laughs> yes, I'm very excited to be launching that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just using the, the pink swatch from earlier as well. It's going to be uh, $2 holidays to Australia, right? <laughs> that, that's, uh, there's, there is a kind of a phrase called reassuringly expensive as well. <laughs> <It's kind> of... <laughs> no, $2 holidays around the world. We haven't really worked out all the nuts and bolts of profit margins and that kind of thing, but it's, we're pretty sure gonna, people are going to love gonna, it. It's going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use another free font called Oswald for a bit of contrast. And can reduce that to about size 36 points and change the text color to white. And we're going to type creative summer tours up to 99 cent off. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> even got a tagline for you and um a little tip here as well is if i just zoom in when you have numbers mixed up with um type text as well it's worth just um dropping the point size down ever so slightly by about 1.5 two points mm -hmm. and it just um it's it's very subtle but it just stops the text the numbers from standing out too much because they do tend to be quite a bit bigger than the actual type characters yeah, it pulls the eye in a bad way. Yeah. It's a good tip. Um, Susan says, I really need to up my layer organizing game. Joe puts me to shame. Uh, I, if, honestly, if, if I wasn't being recorded, this would be, you would cry. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Susan. You're not alone. You're not alone. Don't worry. <laughs> like my best behavior here. <laughs> Based in London, serving the world. Oh, look at that. She's going to advertising. So, <laughs> I've got the tagline sorted with everything. I'll be asking for my 10% once this launches. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Come and we'll just um, change the color of the link there to help it stand out to our uh, sort of green that we were using earlier. And what we'll do is just move those across a little bit go so it sits nicely in the corner and we will group these together and call it text bottom or whatever makes sense to you and for our final touch we're going to go to place embedded and go to flamingo one So we now have a rather giant flamingo on the screen. Oh, so wow. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's it. That's exactly that's it. That's it. <laughs> and we're going to reduce that a little bit. And we're going to mirror him. So if we go to edit, transform, flip horizontal, we're kind of facing the other way. It looks like a dancing flamingo now. It's a dancing flamingo. I should have just pressed undo repeatedly. So. <laughs> yeah. So it's just slightly so it kind of fits nice in that space there. Oh, that's a nice bit of extra detail. It is. We've given the flamingo a friend, and we will just um, hide his foot there. It's kind of kicking the website. So we'll go and <laughs> a layer mask. 
select a kind of a medium uh, medium sized brush solid and make sure that black is set to the foreground and then we can just essentially hide that there and that's it uh well i've got to say normally we wait until the end but let's give it up for joe everyone that was impressive design <laughs> that's really really cool um everyone's saying thanks joe um Joe, would you uh, like to oh, look at this? Yes, if you want to shop, I can't even talk now. Stop sharing your screen. You'll be able to see all the lovely comments from people. That was awesome. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Rishti. Oh, Nick. Emojis. Angela. Oh, <laughs> oh, glad you guys enjoyed it. Um, so I think we've got um, 10 minutes or so left. Has okay. anyone got any questions? Are you happy doing some um, rapid fire Q and A, Joe? Just to put you even I more in. ACDC riff on the ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> so, sadly, I don't have my ukulele up here with me, but I, 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 do, I have been learning the intro to Back in Black on the ukulele, which is good fun. <laughs> I've been missing your ukulele videos. Oh. Is that a community member that has gone and found your personal Instagram? I, I don't know. Some, there's some obviously some kind of trail left somewhere online. <laughs> I'm playing. I mentioned that I've liked ACDC. I'm playing the ukulele. So. Uh, that's awesome. Good knowledge, Angela. Um, yes, I want so, to um, yeah, Shristi asks, hi, Tom and Joanna. Uh, would you recommend any programs apart from Photoshop and Illustrator to create such work? Um, I don't know if you know any, Joe. otherwise I, I, I have to admit, I'm kind of a bit of an Adobe fangirl, so I really only just use the, <laughs> the Photoshop and Illustrator. Um, yeah, I mean, if, same for the most part but as angela just mentioned in the comments affinity is really starting to uh you know to really grow in the community hence we are expanding our affinity section in the marketplace for any affinity users out there but it's really it's great software um it's a real good alternative and it doesn't tie you into the monthly subscription see so, yeah, i can see a few affinity uh fans mm -hmm. in the chat Awesome. Um, any other questions, let us know. But otherwise, we have a, a very cool thing to share from Joe's Marketplace store as well. Absolutely, yes. Oh, someone's just asking what's on my wall. If I just move my head, that's um, a, a scan and a printout I ordered of one of my uh, favourite book covers. That's so, a really cool book cover. It is. So, uh, yes, I, I liked it so much. I yeah, I, I kind of scanned it and got it, got it printed out with large size. And it's, it's nice. just, uh, like a halo of typefaces behind my head. <laughs> yeah, it looks like, looks like you're thinking, <laughs> you're thinking about typefaces. It's just spilling out. Um, so we are actually moving the Design Cuts office next Tuesday and Wednesday. And so separate from today, perhaps, but any suggestions for artwork, including from you, would be really appreciated, Joe, because um, we need to make the walls look beautiful. Yes, yes. <laughs> And so, yeah, next time um, we're doing this hangout, in fact, this time next week, none of this will look like this. We will have a proper backdrop in a film <laughs> studio area. Oh so my God. <laughs> going to get super professional. Um, another question. Oh, that is a good question from Nick. Says, what is your favorite typeface, Joe? Oh, God. Um, That's a tough one. It's like your favorite child. My favorite. I have to... Um... I, I find myself using um, Trend Slab quite a lot and Trend Sans, which I believe yeah. I got from one of the Design Cuts bundles many, many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Trend's nice. And Trender by Latino Type as well. You know that Ooh, one? I know that one. Oh, check it out. It's different, but it's, um, yeah, really beautiful. Yeah. It's nice veneer is what I like. I've used that a lot, but now I keep seeing it everywhere and I'm just becoming one of those annoying people. It's like, that's veneer. That's this. <laughs> that's, that's a free one. I wouldn't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually love, I've started um, in some of my personal work, I've started using Buffalo, mm -hmm. which was one of the fonts that we actually collabed to make with one of our designers. Yeah, exactly. And I love that because people keep asking me where, yeah, they're like, where's it from? And I'm like, actually, it's one of ours. <laughs> and it, you know, it's not absolutely everywhere. So it feels yeah. a bit more unique. Uh, Shristi says Comic Sans. Get out, Swishti. <laughs> Not even as a joke. Uh, poor, poor, poor Comic Sans. I think it's, it's got a place, but it's kind of... <laughs> exactly. Um, like Lobster 3.0 that suddenly became like the Comic Sans of web fonts after a while. It's it sort did. Of it everywhere, yeah. <laughs> I've seen so many memes about that, just ripping into it. 
Um, so Joe, would you mind uh, possibly sharing your screen again and going to your amazing marketplace store? Okay, I'm not even prepared for this. No. Or, or do you want to open up the store and yeah. then share your screen? Um, and the reason being is um, you guys need to be aware of Joe's store. She is not only a fantastic educator, but okay. she's really been adding more and more incredible products. And some of them might look quite familiar. So in a second, hopefully we can have a look at that. But I believe uh, we got some really cool discounts today on many of those yes. products, which is exciting. Yes, let me just share my screen. Hang on one second. Cool. Um, and for anyone who wants to check it out themselves, we've got the shiny green button below the video where it says check out Joe's uh, store. Yes, so, thank you to the Zyphus team. We've been working very hard getting this all organized and put together. Do you want to um, talk people through what you're all about and uh, why all the chalk, basically? Because I absolutely love it, but people might not know the background. Okay. Um, well, I have a business called the Cotswold Chalkboard, and I do a lot of sign writing, uh, mainly places like kind of pubs, bars, restaurants, where I do chalkboard designs. And that can be a combination of usually chalk pens and natural chalk as well. But what um, we did about last year, I think just over a year ago, was like collaborating with Design Cuts to create a digital chalk pack, which is this one here, the Chalk Extravaganza Pack. Ooh, can we go on it for um, a second? Yep, which hopefully is loading okay. now. This is still one of um, my favorite packs. And the reason we did it is we saw every single chalk pack out there. It looked really fake. It was like a, a kind of digital knockoff. Yeah. Um, so Joe, we we obviously were friends with her and the fact you're a professional chalkboard artist, we said, why don't we make one that is truly authentic? Yeah. And um yeah, and that's kind of that's kind of it really. So these are all drawings that have been done in chalk. Uh, scans cleaned up in Photoshop and the, the key here was just to make sure that all the natural texture and like the rough edges and like the variances and pressure that you get from um, natural chalk were preserved. Um, I think I said that I had to get a new scanner by the end of the project because <laughs> <laughs> it just got so bunged up with dust. I now have um, a nice new scanner and a nice big acetate sheet to place on there. <laughs> nice. <happen> again. <laughs> um, it's a hazard of the job. It is, it is. And um, also everything included has uh, it's PSD files, it's PNGs and um, EPS as well. So you do get them in vector format. And this is probably one of my favorite bits of the set is this alphabet uh, set here, which is kind of this really nice sort of old circus vintage style. And you can actually build it up by selecting all the different shadows and outlines and fills, which means that you can also change the color and sort of the style as well. I love it. Honestly, it's got so much character. It's yeah, uh, and, it, and it goes uh, it goes on as such. <laughs> I've got a soft spot for this pack. It's yeah, it's definitely one of my favourites that we've ever collabed on. I know, and it's um, thank you. And the nice thing about this as well is I actually find myself using it in some of my own work, and I don't mean that as kind of as a really bragging thing, but I just find that oh, that's that line is really useful, or this having this kind of dusty effect that I can just like brush on is really it's really good as well. So. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can see there's um, there's a bunch of smaller packs that we've added where we've taken that main pack and split it up because maybe you don't need everything in it. Maybe you're actually just looking for some nature illustrations or some florals or yeah. dividers, decorative elements, a chalk font, any of that kind of stuff. So if you uh, check out um, Joe's store with the green button below this video, I definitely recommend just getting lost in all the chalk goodness <laughs> because it's really it's really cool stuff. Fantastic. <laughs> Angela says, Tom, you, you really don't believe in us saving money. <laughs> we, get, we, we do. You, you save so much money with the time. You can Absolutely. be out there scanning chalk and breaking, uh, breaking your scanner. But no, <laughs> you, you, yeah, you get all this stuff to hand to enhance your projects and well your clients. Oh, Jay, thank you as well. She's saying lovely things about the pack. Thank you. So, Joe, thank you again for jumping on. That was such an awesome tutorial. I hope everyone enjoyed it. If um, if you want to watch the replay and go through it slightly slower or anything like that, we recommend following along, create your own outcomes, have fun with the Flamingo yourself, and um, we'd love to see anything you make. So let us know on the Facebook group, uh, tag us up on social media, and we'd love to try and reshare some of your guys' work. But once again, Joe. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> That was so good. Um, everyone, we really appreciate you jumping on live with us today. We hope you had fun. Thank you yeah, so much for being fun. here with us.
it was a really fun session and thank you for being so chatty especially the uh explosion of emojis that happened yes all, all the designs that you posted face uh design cuts facebook now must include a flamingo i just want to see yes a flamingo <laughs> invasion <laughs> <laughs> a flamboyance as you said uh, a flamboyance of flamingos. <laughs> yeah. awesome well um we will see you guys this time next week in the shiny new office we don't even know what the the film area is going to look like who knows it's gonna it's, it's gonna be like this, like this. <laughs> they don't mean that it's gonna be it's, it's, it's gonna be hollywood quality it's gonna be green screens i look like i'm on a roller coaster arnold schwarzenegger chasing me or something like that we'll work it out production valley but joe um we're, we're chatting soon everyone we'll see you next week have a fantastic rest of your week enjoy the two dollar bundle enjoy all the fantastic chalk packs in joe's store and we'll talk to you soon okay take bye care. thanks bye